All right, so I wanted to talk about uh, what I think is one of the greatest compositions in, in the sort of uh, jazz standards repertoire, which is um, How Insensitive or Insensitaires by Jobim. On every level, this tune is um, just masterful. Um, the first thing I'd like to draw attention to is the use of motif in the melody. So the first part of the melody goes like this. And uh, that is really orbiting around the A, sort of in the in the um, in the treble there. Goes to the uh, G. Yeah, a very similar thing on G. Um, whole step this time, so it's diatonic. So it's kind of the same thing, sequence down a diatonic step. And again, that uses that motive. Different place. There we go. And again, that motive coming back at the end. Brilliant, brilliant structure. Um, the melodic um, composition is only is, is actually matched perfectly by the, um, the harmonic concept of this tune and the way it's put together. So it uses it's heavy use of chromatically descending bass line. Which might be familiar from, well, it's used in many places. In the Baroque era, it had a, an association with death. Um, so it turns up as a, sort of, um, uh, from Purcell opera, Dido and Aeneas, um, the famous farewell or sort of suicide aria at the end, which is, um, you know, really beautiful, but that uses uh, a lamenta based line of uh, the crucifixus from um, Bach's B minor mass. Um, you know, uh, it's, it kind of has that association. Um, that's become a bit lessened over time, so it turns up in tunes like Led Zeppelin's Dazed and Confused and many jazz standards, such as. Uh, so, you know, it don't mean anything. You know, which is um, not really a sad song. <laughs> so, you know, many, many just standards. Uh, well, it's often known as um, chromatic embellishment or something. Um, you get lots of these kind of voice leading things, often on static minor chords and tunes like uh, My Fuddy Valentine and Blue Skies and all the rest of them. And it turns up, you know, um, all over the place. In the case of Jobim, I think it does have a melancholy association, although he uses it in Corcovado as well, and Corcovado is not really a sad song. Um, although there is a, a tinge of sadness to it, as there is in many of his of his uh, songs, uh, but I think in this case it definitely is a melancholy song. Um, so the interesting thing about this, I'm just going to talk about the uh, the first few bars because I find them very beautiful. So if we just put this, uh, it's possible to understand that first bit of the melody as being um, a kind of a pedal point. Which I think is, I think this this sort of beginning bit is is borrowed from Chopin to some extent. I can't remember which composition. It's one of the preludes. There's an appoggiatura there, which is rather eloquent. I think that A against the B sharp dissonance obviously resolves beautifully to that G, but the dissonance happens on the B and then it resolves a bit later, meaning that the dissonance is kind of highlighted, and then that G becomes a new pedal tone. And then we go down again. Uh, sorry, get uh, sorry. Excuse me. We jump into E flat and the bass, and then up the half step. Another one, you do. Okay, this is just going bass and melody, right? And then we have a, a C. So it's a fourth. We're going down to a flat five because the bass descends, but the melody stays the same. And then a fifth on that note. Uh, that'd be flat six, although the melody's doing something else at that point. Um, so, so the F is the uh, third of D. And then we get this, it stays on that note. Okay, so really it's based around three notes, A, G and F, and, and then they kind of form these beautiful pedal points. So it's possible to understand a song like that, although obviously the melody does do more than that. 
um, but I'm just like reducing it down to the bare bones. So one thing I would do right away is I just add a tenth in underneath um, just to support the melody and surprisingly how much of the song comes out. So just minor tenths going down. No resolution. No wider to a major ten. And then the at this point the melody is actually a tenth away from the bass, so that becomes like a major seventh, which you can keep in. And then we go up a half step with the bass, minor tenth now, and minor seventh. And then that becomes that G, the pedal becomes the seventh of A, so then we go to the tenth again. You see what I mean? And then we get this appoggiatura on the D, right? And then we get another fourth, which doesn't this doesn't resolve, so if I put 10th on top, it gets all the outline C minor 11th chord. Sorry, there's a minor 10th minor there. But you could do that if you want to do that. The original harmony is that. And then, okay, major 10th with the F on top. Makes a fairly standard B, B flat major chord without a fifth. Oh, no, sorry, that is a fifth. Yeah, standard B flat triad. And then um, we do that again. So uh, this this note is actually the f uh, something or other. Uh, next, uh, where are we on? So we actually go down to the E and then back to the F on the uh, so that, well we can play straight D minor there. So it's the F on there. So again tenths right with the bass. And then we go. So now it becomes uh, the sort of, think of this as an F7 chord. And that's a C there. I would put another tenth on there. So um, I suppose, where would that be? The F is there, so it's be there. So we'll just, we'll just put in a third here. Then the same thing down a half step. So that's, that's the sort of journey of the harmony in the uh, melody three. So you just add a, add a tenth on top of every, every bass note, and it's right. As for the other notes, you know, you can uh, kind of try to carry them over from chord to chord. So the first one is a D minor ninth. So we go to C. Now I like to go down to a B flat here. Let's keep the B flat for the next chord. Very dissonant, but it sounds cool. Actually, you can uh, be better if I use a because you get a lovely little bit of contrary motion there. Yeah, isn't that pretty? And then B flat major 13th here. So, a few things that are differing from the real book. You can just play a straight major there, although I do like the ninth. I do usually play that. And then you can go to this one. Which is like a sixth chord, but it's got a flat seventh in. That's wrong according to theory, but I hear Joao Gilberto playing it when he plays it. And then that simple G slash B instead of the G seven slash B they have in the chart. I think it's just a bit sounds a bit better, you know, to put, not put too fine a point on it. And then we get the uh, the thir major, B flat major thirteenth chord, which is very not that usual to get a major thirteenth. Flat major seventh, and then I get up a semitone, a half diminished, E half diminished, and then I'm playing um, a flat nine under the seventh there. So it's just that diminished seventh shape on top of an A bass, and then and then we go down to uh, the F with the D in the bass. So this could be that. That's all right, I think, for that chord, and then. C minor 11th here, so I don't play that middle chord. There's that, whatever it is. B diminished is fine there. Then I don't play any passing chord here either. And then it's, uh, yeah, so this is the bit that I think the real book gets the wrongest, is this, um, they play a 2-5 here, which I think is confusing and unnecessary. I don't, the, the, the versions I listen to, the classic versions, don't have that. It's just literally, um, you know, F7 slash C. And 
and Dirt Holidays on top. That beautiful B flat, sharp 11th, just a subdominant chord in D minor. And I go back like that, just to try and sort of give it a little bit more, uh, you know, it's what they do on the um, Astrid Gilberto Stan Getz version. It's, I just really like it. It's a way to sort of push it into the next bit rather than just having, uh, you know, two bars of D minor. And it makes it a bit sadder and a bit, a bit sweeter, I think. Okay, so soloing-wise, um, I think probably the biggest problems are the first few bars and also that bit there. Because this tune is not, um, it's not itself a 2-5-1 a tune. They've put, basically everything that I don't like about the, um, uh, the real book chart is, is, is they're putting extra sort of 2-5 and 5 substitutes in there to try and make it a bit more kind of uh, beboppy, I guess, or something. I don't know what they're doing. Um, I don't like it. Um, so I'm going to give you a hint about the first progression. Now, the first progression is actually a substitute for this. Which is uh, almost Hotel California. So, I mean, this is interesting, this kind of progression, because it's kind of like the... Um, Usually we have two five one. This is kind of more like a one two five or a one five. So uh, the sort of things I do over a minor two five, which you'll know if you watch my other videos, is like I'll take a C dominant scale, run right down to the third of A seven, which is a Barry Harris move. This works great here. So you just go. Same thing again. careful how you um, resolve into the next chord because obviously it's not a simple uh, going up the fourth thing so it's a bit different to what you're used to but it's usually just a half step away and you can do it like that for instance um, so it just requires a little bit of practice okay the other bit that's tricky is a bit at the end so So this bit here, again, if you think about this in a 2-5 way, you'll miss. So this. How do you play that? So I mean, that is actually quite straightforward. As I say, it's kind of like taking this sort of secondary dominant, or it could be seen as a sub for C minor 6. And that's actually a 6 half diminished chord substitute. Then this is like a 2 5 one. So it's not that different from the usual kind of thing. So you're going from C minor. kind of play it as a, as a sort of C minor thing going into a minor 2-5-1 in, in obviously D minor. Um, uh, that, that chord is quite fruity though, however you play it, so it's quite nice to reference that. And then back into the top, right? So what I did there is I just played, um, you know, that as a as a C minor sixth. Here's your minor sixth diminished or not in minor or whatever you want there. And then that that is a as a, as a a B minor seven flat five. And that's a two five one so half diminished as a substitute for B minor, sorry, B, um, losing, losing the plot, B, B major 7th sharp 11th, so these, these two things serve the same function, and then obviously it's the dominant, whatever you normally do for alter dominance there. So hopefully that, that clears that up a bit, I always found this tune quite hard to play before I understood how diminished chords work. Mm -hmm. style. On both versions that I checked out for this video, I wouldn't describe myself as being a specialist in Brazilian music, so you've got to take this... Um, I mean, all this video has been geared around jazz, really, and the composition itself, but, I mean, 
if you want to learn more about Brazilian interpretation and uh, rhythm, it's probably best to go to the source and check out some videos made by Brazilians, for instance. Um, but I find with this, uh, this song, like a very simple form of accompaniment, like... Very simple like that. It's actually pretty much what Gerard Roberto plays. I mean, he plays very legato. in the key of B flat and it starts off actually with a straight major. How pretty is that? So very very simple and I mean uh, Louis Bonfire plays a very similar feel. I think he breaks it it's a bit more kind of like breaks that first chord a little bit rather than playing it right through um, and he, he plays slightly more jazzy voicings I think and he, and he varies it a little bit so yeah anyway thanks for watching um, post any comments below as always please like and subscribe all of that kind of thing and uh, I'll see you on the next one bye <laughs>